Hey, it's Sunday the 20th. So I'm curious, uh, how, how are you all doing over there um, in England and Europe? I see Storm Eunice is just kicking ass. My goodness, those winds. I wouldn't be surprised if some folks actually can't watch because of um, effects of the storm. Only thing I want to say is, you know, we're dealing with this stuff because, you know, back when the alarms bells started being rung by scientists and concerned humans about climate change, well, you know, the money was just too good. You know, it's, you know, we we're making money. You know, we can't. That's too important. So now we're getting our asses kicked all across the the planet because of the wreckage of um, our uh, stupidity. Of course, there will be those that argue, well, it's not this, it's not that. Well, I'm not a scientist, but that's how it looks to me. I just hope you guys are okay. Um, it looks like there's been some devastating um, destruction over there. Just huge trees and roofs and the O2, is that some big stadium or something? Part of the roof got ripped off? Wow. So, just, just what's on my mind. Um, over here, it's a sunny day. It's going to be in the 60s today. And then tomorrow, it's supposed to only get up to like maybe 20 degrees. And possible snow. Oh well. Want to see some records? Some music I've been listening to? Um, yeah, I'll just do that and whatever pops into my head, I'll say it. I love the band Devo, have loved them from the very beginning. And uh, I do think not only are they um, uh, with a original and unique with their idea, but the band as musicians. And as a band, they're really good. And this is one I'd been needing. Oh no, it's Debo. I just got this. Really good. And um, to me, the biggest, the best song on here is not the hit. Out of Sync on here is just a banger. I love this band. Got to see them live in the early days when they were still wearing the yellow suits. They were mind blowing. I love Devo. And yes, I know the whole story about Jerry Casal. He was at Kent State. And he's the actual mastermind of the Devo thing. And Devo was again. I'll um, talk about the world and what I don't like about it. Business and how the bottom line of profit really ruins the beauty of most things. This band really was started by Jerry Casal with the Mothers Ball Brothers. Jerry really was the mastermind of the, the concept in viewing their history, from what I understand, in, in interviews. And of course, the record company saw that the person who had the marketable look it was Mark. The, and he's also the lead singer, but the glasses, perfect, you know, it's... Um, like a logo, you know, it's a thing that you can, and um, whereas uh, in the beginning it was all for one, one for all, the corruptive rot of, um, you know, I've seen it and experienced it personally, where when people smell money and they want something, <clears throat> they go for it. And Mark Mothersbaugh was uh, romanced into being, uh, and no diss to Mark at all. Just this is just the nature of money, and what and how it ruins so many wonderful things. No doubt, the band No Doubt, um, Gwen Stefani. Oh, you don't need that band. You know, almost as soon as they got a hold of her, they started ditching the band No Doubt. You know, it's happened time and time again. So, I had some fun listening yesterday. I didn't practice at all. I just um, 
played music and um, thought about my little brother, to be honest. So, years ago, someone, I can't remember who, but sent me some records by the Knit. Someone, a Dutch person, it might have been uh, Marcel. And I've had these, and I've listened to them, but not deeply. And so last, yesterday, for some reason... Oh, thank you, Cosmic Drifter. This is why. Uh, I said before, people will be, send me links, and most of the time I don't click on them. And the one that Cosmic Drifter, because of the uh, length of um, your um, connection here, I clicked on it, and I'm glad I did... Uh, Super Sister documentary. It's in Dutch, but I still enjoyed it. So, Robert Jan Steps of Super Sister was also in this band, The Knits. So, it caused me to pull this album and play it. Adieu, Sweet Bonhoff. And I really like this. It's pop music, but I really like the difference in European pop in that, and this is not usual, but that this is where I find it more have found it more over the years in looking at music that European songwriting will take chances and go places off the beaten path trying things and that I love and find interesting so when I got to side two the infant king it's not the words the singing is still a lot of times the singing is a distraction to me it's the music it was the chords on it. It's like, hmm, I don't think I've heard this before. Really intriguing. Not that it was completely successful, but just that they're trying something different. I love that. That's the adventure and the fun of music. Listening to music for me can really be like touring, going places, literally, physically, through the music. It's, it's wonderful. So here's an album that I'd been after and could never find an original. Thankfully, it was reissued, and I got this. Isa Kotalainen, Ajatu Slopsi. I believe there's a connection to the band Wigwam. It's a keyboardist. This is a keyboard fantasy. In parts, a little bit like um, Klaus Schultz. And then it's its own thing. It's one of those albums where it hits a really super sweet spot and it's like it only lasts for a few minutes but it makes the whole album worth it and it kind of justifies that re this one my this is an idea of an album cover I just love it justifies that mystical cover this one little patch of music on the album it's like wow he's really found something I love that. That's what I like about listening to music is discovery. Not, I like nostalgia too, but it has a lot to do with, again, why I don't listen to blues-based music because you know where it's going to go. And that's not where I want to be. I pulled these, some of these, these Radiohead remixes. This is some of my favorite Radiohead. Uh, I made a video about this one in particular when it came out because it, um, made me cry. Just something about the way it, and it's still there. It doesn't make me cry, but what it, what I was catching really is there. Giving up the ghost, give up the ghost. The Thriller House Ghost remix. It's really touching. It's really good. I think there's seven of these in total. I have them all. Really good remixes. One of the best bands to come out of Italy, for sure, when it comes to progressive rock music. Uh, Premiata for Neria Marconi, some kind of good bakery. This is a reissue, reissue of their first album. It's an Italian reissue, but it's not gatefold. And this is just a beautiful, wondrous album where the music, it just starts, the way the album starts. It, it's like you're on a, on a ship sailing into this fantasy land. It's a really wonderful place to go. This music really is saving my soul in these trying times that we're in right now. This bullshit with um, 
um, Russia and Ukraine reminds me of my childhood with the Cold War. I remember how my parents tried to d explain to us what was happening with the Cold War. Stephen, do you remember any of that? I do. It didn't make any sense to me, but that there was someone that had these missiles that they said, well, they can send these missiles over and they can blow us all to smithereens. And so we got to be scared. And so there was just, it was weird. It literally was for a time in my early youth where the Cold War, just like now, affected the atmosphere in the air. I was just a kid. But I found myself feeling scared for no reason. And here we are again with this war shit. And no one, ca no one can explain with any kind of sense why anyone has to die. Why do any troops need to shoot at each other? Why does any shooting need to start? There's no reason for it. It's madness. Man, just, oh, God. So the music saves me. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a, part, of, it's a part of life that I can get into. I mean, I suppose I could be like a person, who, person who's into wildlife and camping and stuff, and I could do that and be out in the outdoors. But shit, these days I just feel like sanctuary, staying the fucking home. Picked this up used a couple days ago. Yeah, Friday I went and, and made um, a trip to the record store. Um, I kept it down. I can always buy more than I <laughs> end up buying. So this is what I got. Bombay Bicycle Club. Are they Irish, English, a mixture? I think the lead singer's dad is um, a famous Irish folk singer. McCall, am I getting that right? I really like this band, and um, Jamie McCall, his dad, or something like that. It's the album before this, which I don't have except on uh, download, that really captivated me. All the songs, that bleeding, plaintive voices of his. I really don't know what he's singing about, don't care. Really like, this is pop music. It's wonderful. I like it a lot. Bombay Bicycle Club. I like it a whole lot. So this is what I uh, picked up on Friday, and in particular, this is what got me to go to the record store. I saw that this had just come in, this new, newly released remaster of 13th Floor Elevators. Double album. One is the mono version, which is the, the most sought after, and the other album is stereo but they come on this really nice splatter vinyl. It didn't say that on the cover, it just said colored vinyl. And they had this plus their first album, but I didn't get the other one. Had I known, honestly, if I'd known they were looking like this, I'd have bought them both. I already had this put on the picture disc. And I have their first album, a good reissue of it. That's why I didn't buy it right away. My favorite 13th Floor Elevators album I don't have on vinyl. Bull of the Woods. Just on CD. I'd like to find that on CD. This is just, this band was way ahead of their time in so many ways. This album is really deep. And the psychedelic guitar sound. You can definitely hear where Jimi Hendrix and um, was in sync or vibing with what was happening with these cats down in Texas and the guitar sound, the guitar sound on here when they go when they play the uh, fuzz solos, wow, it's a very distinct sound, one that I love, truly the sound of acid. And I uh, played some jazz. Was have been thinking about pulling all my uh, actual albums. I don't have them all, but I have a bunch. And then I then I stop because it's like about 50 records and anyway. But I pulled this, Jacques, Jacques Crucial unit. Way ahead, not one of the more lauded titles of the series. Not a well-known name. This is a good date though, okay? This is a good one. He's got um, Arthur Jones, Claude Del Clue, Bob Guerin, 
I believe Bob Guerin was with Joni Mitchell for a while. Do I get that right? Bass player? Maybe not. Uh, it's um, There's a lot of improvisation on here. Of course, it has the heads that they go into. It's not super fiery playing, but it's it's um it's good playing. Okay, it's, it's like um, I dare say that um, I haven't heard all this man's records. I bet he's got something really good because it sounds like something was cooking, something was in the brew, something was stirring up. <coughs> this is one I just pulled because I just I like David Bowie. And I like him all eras now. Uh, always have, but you know I've had this love and hate. But his commercial shit is great. Tonight, this album tonight, loving the alien, the whole album. Don't look down. Blue jean. This is great. It's great, 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 great. A couple more that I um, picked up on Friday. Used. Christopher Willits, ambient artist. Um, <coughs> came familiar with him from him working with Ryuichi Sakamoto, as you know, I love opening. This is real good. Got lucky and got it on um, clear vinyl, too, and in good shape. This is this is um, Ambient Music Deluxe. He really does have a methodology that creates deep, satisfying work. Is this the last one? Yeah. And then this, one from the past that I never picked up um, because I didn't like the cover, Ambergris. I would, I would, you know, see this in the cutouts and I'd always pass over it getting other stuff because gr graphics are um, important to me. I kind of thought this might be good, but it was still like, ugh, you know what I mean? So this is, uh, I think, 1969 or 70 when this came out, this is a horn-based band. And at that time, horns was the big thing. This band was led up by Jerry, uh, no, not him. One of the cats in this band was originally in the first lineup of Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Might have been the bass player. But it's this is actually a pretty good album. It's It's of the time where it gives you a smorgasbord of songs. It's got the hard driving horn song. It's got a hard rocker. It's got the song for the ladies. You know what I mean? Uh, but um, good playing. And another uh, trivial thing here is that the percussionist, uh, Jimmy Malin, uh, I saw him in Peter Gabriel's um, first touring band, the first time I saw Peter Gabriel live um, solo. The percussionist from this band, Jimmy Malin was in the band with Peter Gabriel, just trivia. Okay, so I know that a lot of, I know that a, some of you folks who watch me are over there in England. Tell me how you're doing and uh, everybody else, I hope you're doing okay. Uh, here in Omaha, tonight is the OEAA's, the Entertainment Awards um, presentation. Uh, it's not a big deal at all locally, it seems. It seems that it's only of interest to people who are involved. Um, there's no chatter about it at all in social media. I, like I said, I have no expectation about winning. Just the fact that I'm still included keeps my keeps me interested. So, But then also the fact is that tonight there will be a portion of the show that includes content from me, uh, a piece that features the TBD Dance Collective um, matched with my one of my songs, one of my songs, CV off my album Future Still. So I want to watch to see how that comes off. Anyway, take care and uh, let me know how you're all doing. <laughs>